Yo, what's going on? So I've been making some house beats lately and I wanna just talk about how I chop up and think about flipping house samples because it's a little bit different than how I think about flipping hip hop samples. Although I think it can sort of translate to both. When it comes to house production, I'm still pretty new at it. I've only been doing it for like a year and a half or so. Whereas with hip hop, I've been doing that for, for probably 10 plus years. So that being said, I am still sort of new into the whole house genre and making music in that way. But I've really loved it since I've started it. And it's something that I've kind of really gotten a passion for both as a producer and as a fan. So I've already found a sample that I think will work well to chop up and it's off this Whitney Houston record. The record's pretty sick and it's not as common as her two records with I Wanna Dance With Somebody and How Will I Know. Those are kind of the records I see everywhere. This one I haven't seen as much. When it comes to how I actually chopped up this sample, because it has so many instrumentals and elements to it, it has drums, vocals, mul multiple instruments, I chopped it up by BPM. And I find that that's the best way to chop when you have so many elements in the sample. So just to give you a little taste of what the sample sounds like, I already sped it up a little bit. And like I said, I chopped it by BPM. Here's what it sounds like. So we have some nice vocal runs in there and it has a lot going on and a lot for us to make something out of. So first thing I'm gonna do to start this house beat is I'm going to lay down some drums. So I'll lay down the pattern and then we can look at how we can sort of chop up and sequence this sample. Let's do it. Okay, now that we've laid down that drum pattern, we can now start to sequence this sample a little bit and add it into the beat. And the first thing to keep in mind when you're looking at the sample, because I did it by BPM, all of the samples in these two columns right here are going to be kick drums, and all of the samples in these two columns right here are gonna be snares, and I'll show you what I mean. So for example, when I play any of the samples in this column, you'll notice that they all have snares at the beginning of them, and all of the samples in this column all have kicks at the beginning of them. So here's the kicks and here's the snares. So when I first started making house beats, I would oftentimes just end up making loops and putting the drums on top because I have everything chopped up in BPM. So if the drums are playing and I just play a line, it's going to work out and it's gonna be in time. For example, it would sound like this. And that sounds really cool, but when you keep in mind all of these drums are kicks and all of these drums are snares in these two columns, it allows you to piece together other variations and even just really think outside of the box in terms of the lines that you can play. And so basically I just have to play something from these two columns and then play something from these two columns and you're sort of going back and forth between those variations because you're gonna then be playing a kick, a snare, a kick, a snare. So for example, rather than doing this, and I'll actually add drums, I'll just come up with something off the top of my head, and I'm just gonna make sure that I play this column, this column, this column, and then this column, but any of the pads, and we'll see how it sounds. And as you could hear, although it sounds a lot more choppy, which I actually like, it still comes together because I'm still kind of keeping the structure of each of the bars, which is going to be a kick on the first beat, snare on the second beat, kick on the third beat, snare on the fourth beat. And once you kind of get a handle of this, you don't even need to stick with this linear pattern going left to right. As long as you're playing a kick, snare, kick, snare, then you'll still be able to maintain that basic structure of the original sample. So keeping that in mind, I'm gonna lay down a sample sequence and I'm just gonna make sure that I play a kick, a snare, a kick, and a snare. It doesn't matter where they are on the program as long as I stick to that pattern. And it's just sort of a good general rule to keep you on track and keeping the structure of the sample. And this definitely isn't a hard and fast rule. It's just what I like to kind of start with because once you sort of lay down the groundwork of what your pattern's going to sound like, you can then start to experiment with the other sort of samples, but this is just the way that I like to start. I feel like it really keeps me on track. So let's lay down a pattern with this rule in mind and see how it sounds. Let's do it. A 
Okay, I think that pattern turned out really good. And as you could see, I ended up not going from left to right, but rather just made sure that I played a kick snare, kick snare, as I mentioned. So now that we have that pattern together, let's come up with another pattern that will work well with this. And again, I'll just try to stick with this rule and see what we can come up with. Let's do it. Okay, I think that sequence came together really, really well. And I think that was a good example of how this can kind of work. So in terms of the snare beats that I kind of used in that sequence, it was this pad, this pad, this pad, this pad, and this pad. So as you could see, they all existed in these two columns because these are all the snares. And then all of the sort of kick samples that I used were all in these two columns right here. So now to keep this beat sort of moving along, we can sort of turn it into something. I'll add a bass line onto this beat just to give it some real punch, and we'll see how that sounds. Let's do it. All right, I hope you like how the beat turned out. Kind of kept this video a little bit short and sweet, but I hope it showed that if you kind of keep in your mind where the kicks and snares are on your BPM chops, it will give you a good idea of how you can sort of structure your sample chops and sample patterns, especially on house beats. So if you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you want to see in a future video. Appreciate you so much as always. Thank you for coming back and watching and hanging out, making music and learning with me. Love you guys so much. Peace.